Hello. Would you give us your name, your institutional affiliation, and your research and teaching interests? Yes, my name is Chelsea McKelvey, and I'm at Clemson University in the English department. My research lies in the early modern period and the intersection between science and religion. And my teaching is mostly in the general education curriculum with technical writing, British literature, and world literature. Hi, Chelsea. We are meeting at Arizona State University at the NEH Summer Institute of 2023, which is organized by the Center for Biology and Society and the Center for the Lincoln Center for Applied Ethics. Given your research interests and your professional background, what drew you to this institute? I think at my research, I was very interested in thinking about um, scientific development and sort of ethical concerns, which are close to um, issues of religion or you know cultural differences. But the real thing that excited me about the Institute, the reason I decided to apply, was thinking about how to integrate it into my teaching, um, how to apply what I might learn here into the classroom, um, and specifically into the, the undergraduate um, general education classroom. Um, I was excited to think about the many uh, STEM majors that I teach, um, potentially finding my course more obviously valuable and applicable to their future careers. Over the last few weeks, we met and interacted with people from many different disciplines. We met ethicists, biologists, scientists, philosophers, political scientists, lab directors, and we also did a couple of lab experiments. Would you comment on one or two ideas or discussions or interactions that we've had that stand out to you and why they seem particularly relevant to you? I think the entire experience has been amazing. But the thing that really surprised me uh, was, ju was just learning, being exposed to um, all the different developments in STEM fields, the many guest speakers, as well as just the readings we've done. Um, and one that really stands out to me is Dr. Jim Collins visited us uh, two different days um, and talked about a variety of developments, including uh, stem cell engineering. And he also spoke to us about purposeful extinction as well as de-extinction. Um, and I just thought many of the things he was, he was kind of revealing to us I could use in my classroom. These are things my students are going to pursue in their careers and um, we could easily include these conversations um, from a humanities um, viewpoint into my classroom. And, and so that's just one example of the way just being exposed to these ideas um, on a deeper level, I feel like has really improved my ability to reach these students. You mentioned the humanities and you're talking about a, a scientist. Mm -hmm which is integrating the sciences and the humanities, what role would you say that a liberal arts education can play, one that integrates the arts with the humanities and the sciences, what role can that model of education play to prepare students mm. to face the challenges of the 21st century? Yeah, um, I think it is absolutely essential. Um, especially because in the world, these things are integrated, right? The world is globalized and it's an integrated world. But I think often at the undergraduate level, uh, humanities and STEM are seen as two polar opposites. And that is just not a good representation of what students are going to encounter once they get their degree and move on. So I think finding ways to show them that the two areas, these two op supposed opposites are not opposite. They are. Um, in conversation with each other already and we only need to sort of embrace that um, at the undergraduate level I think to go ahead and get them in that mode of seeing it all as as one piece rather than as humanities versus STEM because once they move into the world that's that's what it will look like I think and where would you say a general education curriculum fits into this this uh, strategy of education I think it's, it's difficult at that level because um, 
students don't uh, currently view it that way. They view sort of that you have your core courses and then you have your major courses and the core to many students is something you you get through, you complete it so that you can get to those exciting major courses. And that's wonderful, but I, I wonder if a model where the core courses, where they're being sort of exposed to different ideas from the humanities or from the sciences could be um, better serve them once they get to their major courses, rather than just being something they kind of have to grow through. Um, and I think as we create a culture on our institutional campuses, where the humanities and the sciences talk to each other a little more, students will begin to see that integration. Thanks a bunch, uh, Chelsea. <laughs> Have you, are you familiar with ASU? Is this your first visit this to Arizona? This is my Arizona's? first visit to ASU. What stands out to you at ASU? Beyond the heat, uh, yes. what, I think the thing that stands out to me is just the ability to try new things, to create new departments or new schools that have that model of integration that I think so many other institutions could learn from. I mean, we've, we have spoken to people who have within the same grouping, you know, they're working on the same research project. You have a philosophy person next to a bioengineering person and they're talking to each other and learning from each other. Um, and I think that is the model that at the faculty level we need to learn from and that if we have that, students will also learn from that and begin to see the value of integrating humanities and science. Great comments, uh, <laughs> Chelsea. Thank you for taking the time to have this conversation. Appreciate it a lot. And we look forward to continuing these conversations in different places and hopefully in different modalities. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you.